All right, so we are rolling. Today is going to be a lot of fun. Candle Science sent me their uh, seven new spring and summer fragrances that they just released. And when I say just released, uh, they actually sent me these like a week or two ago. And you, many of you guys know that I'm trying to transition to that new location, that new space. So I just missed that box and I literally just stumbled across it. Um, a couple days ago. So here I am a little late to this party. By the time this video posts uh, and I've had a chance to test these out, I'm going to be a little late to the party, I imagine. I'm sure you have probably already seen these yourselves, heard about them, tested them. But nevertheless, I hope you guys enjoy the style of this video as well as the content, of course. And I'm really excited to get into these. So I love candle science. I love fragrance testing. I love not just sniff and talk though. I really like to get into it with you. You guys are going to do this with me. We're going to check out the scents for the first time. We're going to make test candles together. I mean, figuratively, obviously, but you're going to be part of this with me as we do it. We're going to pick out colors together and just have a little bit of fun with it. Let's get a few particulars out of the way first. We have seven new spring and summer fragrances by Candle Science. So rather than just tell you all of them right now, I'll just let you know what they are as we go. We're going to be making two candles with each one. Now these are one ounce testers that they sent. So that's really enough to make basically somewhere around 10 ounces, uh, maybe a tad more, 10 to 12 ounces worth of candles. So we're gonna make two candles each about three quarters full, somewhere in that range. Now you might be wondering what wax I'm using. So I've talked about this in other videos before. I like using a particular wax for testing. I like to use this wax in general anyways, but specifically for testing. And that is a ProBlend 600. It's a 50-50 parasoy blend. So it's a mix of the two most popular type of waxes. I know there are a lot of other waxes, but I can't test them all just for this fragrance review video. So I like to find one that kind of suits uh, a lot of people and is a good baseline for fragrance testing. It's a great choice for fragrance testing because it gives moderate, about average hot throw. And that's what I'm looking for when I'm testing. That way, if something throws really, really well in this wax, then I know it's a superb fragrance oil. If it doesn't throw very good in this wax, it doesn't mean you can't get good hot throw with it, but it means it's probably not much better than average. So I think this is a great choice. We're gonna test two different wicks. I'm not focused on perfect wicking here. I'm not trying to come up with the best colors. These aren't finished products. We're just having fun with it, but because we're making them, I like to at least try to get close to a good couple wick choices while we're doing it. So I'm going to be using Premier 720s in half of them and CDN 2s in half of them. The melt point of this wax is another reason I like to test because it's about average. It's not the highest melt point. It's not the lowest. Again, it's a good baseline. So these two wicks should do a pretty good job at helping us test. Now that all that is out of the way, let's get into it. Let's have some fun. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now let's get into it. Okay, so behind me, this wax that's melting uh, is ready to go. Now, I've got it a couple degrees higher than I normally do. We're going to be working with small amounts here, about 10 ounces at a time, uh, so or 12 ounces at a time. So we've got to move pretty quickly. I also forgot to mention, I'm going to be using a 9% fragrance load, which again, it's kind of average. So that's what we're going to be working with with this wax. And that's a pretty common choice for this wax anyways. Because we've got one ounce samplers, we want. I just want to use the whole thing. So we're going to be making just under... 12 ounces worth of wax. So around 11 to 11 and a half ounces of wax. And then one ounce of fragrance oil will be roughly 9% fragrance load. And that'll give us two candles, about five and a half ounces each for testing purposes. Now, while I'm getting these wicked, which I should have already had done, uh, I want to mention that I have not smelled any of these fragrances yet. Um, I haven't talk to anyone else. Um, I haven't watched any other videos or any, any reviews by Candle Science themselves, nothing like that. So I'm going to let you know what I think about them as we're going. After I make these, I'm going to let these sit and cure for about two to three days. And uh, after that, I will test them. But you guys won't know that any of that happened because I'm just going to continue this video. But just know that on the second half of this video, when I'm tell, telling you about the results, that I gave them a couple, uh, two to three days worth of curing. And then I will also rank the hot throw on them. I like to do that on a, on a scale of five. Oh, one last detail I should have mentioned, the jars. Uh, I chose these jars because, again, they are average size jars. Uh, they're very common size jars, uh, straight-sided jars, jelly jars, mason styles. 
this is a pretty common size of jar to use. So it's again, a good baseline to use. I don't like to use extreme things here uh, for testing purposes. What do we learn from that? For example, I'm not going to double wick jars for testing fragrance oils because of course double wicking is going to give more fragrance though because it's a larger jar, you got more flames, you got a wider melt pool. So that can be a little deceiving on how well a fragrance throws. So I like to again start with medium sized jar with one wick. You're seeing the recurring theme, right? Everything's about average. Just find a good baseline. These jars are good for about a medium sized room. Again, another average, so like a broken record in this video. All right, first one we're starting with is cashmere musk. Now I know what cashmere smells like. I know what musk can smell like. So I have an idea of what this is going to make me think of, but I, I definitely smell more musk. It's more like a men's cologne, but you, you can pick up a little bit of the cashmere smell. It actually smells like, um, like a, a soap, like a fancy soap. Yeah, we'll see how this one goes. I'll let you know some of my personal favorites here shortly. So let's go ahead and start with this one though. Uh, we're gonna get our wax ready. As I mentioned, we're gonna have to work pretty quick here. So I'm gonna get the fragrance in first and then I'll add a couple drops of dye. Now we're reviewing candle science fragrances. So I'm using candle science dye as well. There, you can see a little bit better, I think. Now again, I'm not going to spend too much time on the color. I'm not gonna keep adding and tweaking, most likely, although I'm a little anal retentive, so I wouldn't be surprised if I do it a little bit. But we're just gonna get color in, we're gonna get our fragrance in, and we are going to pour. All right, let's go ahead and pour our first one. Seems like a decent color for cashmere and musk. See how it dries. Oops, I went too far, I forgot these aren't gonna be full candles. Oh, well they're almost full. So I can leave that one the way it is. So we're gonna use two different wick holders today. I forgot to label the jars ahead of time which wick was in each one, but uh, I can probably tell the difference easily looking at them, but just, just for fun, let's use a couple different ones. All right, so we'll have the white wick holders in the back and the wooden ones here in the front. All right, the first one is done. We will see how that one turns out. Let's go to the second fragrance oil. This one is coconut. So, so not gonna pronounce that right. That's for sure. I have no idea what this is gonna smell like. I assume somewhat tropical. Let's find out. What am I, what am I getting here? Um, a little bit of pineapple, obviously coconut. Pineapple, coconut, and there's something else a little sweet. There's probably some kind of vanilla undertones as well, but there's something, oh, it's banana. I'm smelling a little bit of banana. Uh, it's not super strong out of the out of the bottle. Coconut, pineapple, banana. So what do you guys think? Just yellow, just sort of a light yellow color. I think that makes the most sense with the banana and the pineapple. Coconut, I've done like kind of light browns and tans or just white, but I think one drop of yellow and we'll see how that looks. Okay, I'm gonna set this one aside. We're gonna go ahead and start another one. We're gonna do white eucalyptus. I don't know what white eucalyptus is. I like eucalyptus, but they're usually kind of soft. Yeah, so I love, the, I love the smell of it. I just hope that it actually has good hot throw because I always get excited about spearmints and eucalyptuses and things like that. And then I make a candle and I'm like, I can barely smell it. I can barely smell it. Let's see what candle science says. <laughs> so basically what I just said is, is what their description is. It's eucalyptus mixed with spearmint, which is really, really common. So it's got eucalyptus and spearmint in it. I, I think a little shade of light spearmint green probably makes the most sense, but let's go ahead and get this in first. Again, we're working with a 9% fragrance load. Oh, uh, we got to get our banana, pineapple, whatever that one was called poured because it's starting to get a little too cool. So let's go ahead and pour this one, whatever it was called, coconut. So, so still not going to get this right. Here we go. See, that's a good looking yellow, I think. And we're gonna go with a little splash of very, just one drop of Key West Green from Candle Science. These are gonna look great together, all these different colors. Very spring, very summery. So yeah, again, let me know what you think about this format for testing and, and fragrance review videos, where again, it's not a standard way of making a batch of candles. We're making them two at a time in kind of a confined space so you guys can see it all. So we're gonna go ahead and pour the uh, white eucalyptus here. Gorgeous light green. 
Once again, I filled up one way too far because I keep forgetting that we're testing and I don't have full candles. All right, next up, let's go with Moonflower Nectar. I like the name, um, a nectar, peach, I like that fragrance, Moonflower. Yeah, this should be interesting. Again, like I said, a lot of floral fruits or fruity florals, whatever you want to say. That's the best one. That's the best one so far. It's the most interesting. It smells a little bit like a uh, perfume, like a woman's perfume that I'm somewhat familiar with. It, it, it just reminds me of something that I've smelled before a little bit, but not too perfumey because I don't really like that. But oh, this one's really good. It's really interesting. I really like this one. This is my favorite one so far. Let's get the wax. Got the wax. Let's go ahead and get the fragrance oil in first. And then let's talk about color. So. It's Moonflower Nectar. I was sort of thinking of an orange, but we have a mango over there and an apricot still to do. So we might need to hold on to that orange. Why don't we make this like a kind of a reddish orange? That sounds like it should be good. This one, it, it's not super strong. I mean, it's hard to tell. There's a lot of fragrances going on in the room. So it, it might just be that, but I hope it's strong because it smells really, really good. I'm gonna experiment with this one a little bit because I want kind of this reddish orangish color. So what I'm gonna do is add a, uh, two drops of magenta. I'm just winging this. I'm just winging this here. So we'll see how it goes. I work a lot with colors. So I'm fairly used to working with colors. So this magenta gives this nice kind of, well, magenta. Uh, let's go ahead and add the yellow that I wanted to add. One yellow, see what that does. We're gonna do one more yellow and I think that might be what we're looking for. For those keeping score at home, for Moonflower Nectar, we have added two magentas and two yellows to roughly 12 ounce total fill here. Let's see what this color looks like now. Yes. See that? Now that's what we're talking about. That looks good. That looks good. All right, let's go ahead and pour our Moonflower Nectar. All right, I'm really loving all these colors we've come up with so far, guys. Thank you for your input. <laughs> all right, next one we're gonna go with is Mango and Gardenia. Now, I'm pretty familiar with, obviously, Mango. I think most people are. I'm pretty familiar with Gardenia, too. Uh, we've already got a yellow. We've got a kind of a rubyish, reddish orange. Um, we're gonna save kind of a normal orange for the apricot grove or apricot grove. So mango and gardenia, we might make it kind of a, mango is sort of a yellowish orange. Maybe we'll try to do that. Oh wait, I gotta tell you what it smells like first. That's super weird. You smell the gardenia, you smell the mango. It smells like you're walking outside and you're smelling the fruits on the trees. That's, that's what it smells like. Oh, it kind of actually smells like a shampoo or a conditioner too. What's that one with the green, uh, green, like herbal essence or something? Did I just make that up? The mango definitely softens that earthy, the really earthy smell. And the gardenia softens the really sweet mango. So, I mean, it's a pretty good balance. You're just smelling the, the direct notes when you're smelling out of the bottle, but I bet it's pretty balanced and smells really good when it's burning. It does have really kind of strong throw though. So uh, I'm, I'm interested to try this one out. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do on this one is start with a yellow and then we'll tone it down with a, an orange or a brown. And we're gonna start with, well, just, just, let's just do one. So right now it's the exact same color as our coconut, so, so hard to pronounce fragrance. Let's go ahead and add one orange. I think that's looking pretty good. See, that's a pretty good mango color. I feel like we could almost do another drop of each. You, we're gonna do one more drop of each. By the time it dries, it's gonna be a little bit lighter, uh, or not as rich, I should say. Once again, for those of you keeping track at home, we have used two drops of yellow and two drops of orange for our mango gardenia. Let's see what we're working with now. Yes, that's it right there. All right, perfect. So we've added four drops of dye and we're, we're working with about three quarters of a pound. So we're still, we're still like six drops a pound, which is, which is totally fine. That's not too much dye at all. See, that's, much, that's more kind of, kind of a richish, mango-ish color. Actually, it's more yellow than it looks like in the jar right now. So uh, I think it's gonna turn out perfect. And I'll, I'll give you a final look when we're all done as well. All right, we are down to two. Let's go with Seldomer. All right, Seldomer, I am instantly gonna think of beach, 
uh, sea salt, things like that. So ocean, shore, there's something that's really interesting. So it is going to remind you of a little bit of walking on the beach, but I swear I'm smelling something kind of fruity and it's really good. I, I, uh, this is mm, I like it. Let's see what candle science says here. We've got mineral rich sea salt. Yep. Bordering on a spa fragrance, cardamom, uh, sea salt, aquatic base of palm, light musk, amber, and orange peel. That's, that's what it is. It's orange peel and it is awesome. Okay. This is my new favorite one. I like this a little bit better than Moonflower Nectar. And it seems to be a little bit stronger out of the bottle. I don't know. I know. I know. That doesn't really mean anything yet. But oh, I love this one. This is my favorite one so far. Talk about color. I think I'm going to go with my initial thought here and go with a blue. Uh, I'm trying to think though, do I want like a sky blue or more like an ocean kind of richer blue? I wish you guys could answer now so I could see it before I actually edit the video. That makes sense. Cause I could use some feedback on this one. Some of the sea breeze is what we'll use to try to get that color. Or I can just use regular blue. Let's use one of each. Let's see what happens. Okay. We're going to start with the one drop of regular blue. Nope. Nope. We're just going to stop there. We're just going to stop there. It looks too good. That's exactly what I was kind of going for. So we are done with that one. While that one's cooling for a sec, let's finish our last one. Apricot Grove. Oh my God, it smells so good. Oh, I love the smell of peach and apricot so much. Apricot Grove is a slightly floral with just a hint of woodsiness. Subtle notes of pear blend with mid notes of apricot, nectarine, jasmine with vetiver, patchouli, and vanilla. My God, there's a lot of in this one. Uh, let's see if I can pick up any of those other notes. No. I really just smell the nectarine, the apricot, like that, that fruit, which is not a bad thing. I like it a lot. I would agree that it is a kind of slight floral too. It's not pure fruit. I don't smell the patchouli and I'm not a huge patchouli fan, so that's not bad. We need to pour our seldomer real quick. Ready for this. This is going to be gorgeous. Love working with colors so much. Love it. I know it can be a pain. It's a little bit more work, but I mean, it just looks so good. I mean, look at this arrangement. I mean, look at it. How, yeah, I'm smelling that seldomer that we just poured and it is awesome. It is my favorite. All right, let's go ahead and add our apricot grove. Actually, have you guys noticed that sometimes I say apricot, sometimes I say apricot. I literally have no idea which one I like. Like most people just tend to say one or the other. I, I think I change it every time because I don't, I don't know. Anyways, let's get it in here. So what do you guys think? I, I know this one here looks like real orange, but it's going to be kind of a yellowish orange when it's dry. So I think we need to go with a just straight orange for like a nectarine color. You guys like how I just asked your opinion and then just decided to do what I wanted anyways. I want this to be orange, orange. We're going to do four drops. Need more orange. So some of these colors like oranges and reds, you got to use a lot to get like the actual true color you're going for. Um, but I don't want to use too much. So I'm going to push the envelope and do eight. Five, six, seven, eight. This looks like what I'm going for. Definitely a more orange. It looks like an orange or a nectarine. Oh, I forgot to put, I forgot to put these on. That would have been a bummer. All right, let's pour our final one. All right, guys, I just wanted to give you a quick view of all the colors that we did here. Um, I think we've got a great selection here of springy, summery, fun colors. We got the whole spectrum here. All right. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the making part with me. This was a lot of fun. I felt like I was doing a live, even though I wasn't next time. I think we should though, but now let's see how the testing turned out. All right, guys, I had a blast testing all of these seven new spring and summer fragrances from Candle Science over the past couple days. Um, and before I go any further, I should just say I'm very, very casual today. I, uh, just got done pouring a couple hundred candles. I honestly just kind of short on time. So uh, this day really got out of hand. So I'm, I didn't have time to really, you know, change and shower or anything like that. So I just threw on a hat and uh, yeah, here we go. So hopefully you guys don't mind. <laughs> so this part of the video is going to be talking about how these things performed, how, how the hot throw was. Um, I'll, I'll talk about cold throw if it was significant. Uh, for the most part, most cold throw, in my opinion, is kind of around average or a little above average. But if anything is like really notably bad, I will mention that. 
but otherwise we're really going to talk about hot throw um, I'll, I'll even mention a little bit about the wicking as well even though the point of this wasn't to wick test it was really just to test the fragrance oils themselves as far as how they perform in the hot throw uh, wicking is going to obviously depend so much on your wax and your jar so i don't know that getting into wicking really does a whole lot of good but I'll at least mention it since we talked about it in the first part of the video. Actually, let's just address that first. I used Premier 720, I believe, and a CDN2 across the board, two in each one, or one of each wick in all scents, so a total of 14 candles. And for the most part, both of those wicks worked across the board in all of the fragrances. With the exception of White Eucalyptus, it appears that I need to wick up at that certain fragrance oil, but I take that with a grain of salt. Again, I didn't do a ton of testing, uh, especially for the wick, but out of all the ones that I've tested, it was the one that was notably off with the wicking. All right, I'm gonna turn the hat around for a minute here. I'm gonna go in the order of my least favorite to favorite. Uh, let's start with number seven, which for me was the coconut, I'm gonna call it coconut bath because that's what it smelled like to me, uh, both out of the bottle and while it was burning. Not my personal favorite type of fragrance. So I ended up choosing that as my least favorite. Uh, as far as how it performed with the hot throw, so let's talk about my scale real quick. I do a scale of 1 to 5. I used to do more than that, 10. Uh, the problem with that was it was so hard to differentiate between like a 6 and a 7, or a 6.5 and, and a 7.5, and or 7 and 8. Like there's too many, it, it was way too hard to pick something. Like I, I don't know, it felt a little ambiguous. Like I could tell you one day it was a 6, the next day it might have been a 7. It was just really hard to kind of keep track. So instead I do a scale of 5. Uh, Make it very simple. Three is average. So when I talk about a three as a hot throw out of five, that does not mean it's like bad. Three is down the middle average. This is what I would expect most fragrance oils to be. So a hot throw of three is average and that's good. Uh, going down, a two is below average. So it's there, but it's, it's a little subpar. One is just poor. It's just bad hot throw. Uh, going back on the other side of the scale, four is above average. So this one's doing a little bit better than an average fragrance oil. Pretty good, good, real good. And then five is just great, great hot throw. Now I don't reserve this for just like the select few, just amazing fragrances that it's just hard to top those. It's perfect. That That's kind of nonsense. So I just use five as any fragrance oil that performs really, really good. It's a great hot throw. So that's my scale. Also keep in mind that that scale is based on my own judgment, my own experience, and it's with my jars, my wax, and the wicks and everything that I use. So back to Coconut Soleil, I gave it a three, so an average hot throw. It's pretty much what I would expect. I would say that I've tested other coconut fragrances that have a stronger hot throw uh, than this one, but this one fell right in the middle. Next up is Apricot Grove or Apricot Grove. Um, this one, I gave it also a three, so it was about average for a hot throw. Neither of these really disappointed, but neither one of them really stood out to me either. I love apricot and fruity, like apricot, peach, nectars. I love those type of fragrances, but this one wasn't my favorite of the ones that I've used in the past, so it is my sixth favorite, but it's still a good fragrance oil. Next up, number five, I chose white eucalyptus. This smells exactly like a regular spearmint eucalyptus fragrance oil. It had a really good hot throw. I would say anywhere between a three and a half to a four. So it was definitely above average. Overall, a really good fragrance. It just, it's just too similar to other ones that I have. But if it's not similar to something you have, then you might want to check that one out. The top four here, I really like all of these. So it was kind of tough to separate them, particularly the top two. But let's go ahead and start with my number four and that is the Cashmere and Musk. Now, this one, I wasn't super fond of uh, when I tested out of the bottle. So, in the first part of the video, I told you, I think, that and it was just not really my cup of tea, but it was all right. I liked this one so much better when it was burning. When it was burning, think all the notes came together a little bit better. You picked up a little bit more of the musk, a little bit more of the cologne fragrances mixed with that Cashmere. I thought it was a really good balanced fragrance oil. I think so far it's it's in the top few of my favorite cashmere fragrances to this point, so I really did enjoy that one. Let's talk about the hot throw. So this one I gave a five. Uh, I had no problem smelling this fragrance or this candle no matter where I put it in the house, uh, no matter what size of room it was in. Um, that's another way to think of this scale is I would expect the candles that I'm using this size to work good in small and medium sized rooms. But if I can still smell that fragrance in large rooms or just wide open areas like an entire floor, then that's a five for me, especially with a jar this size. So I thought cashmere musk was a great overall fragrance oil. All right, number three. For number three, I actually went with mango and gardenia. Another one that I liked much better burning than out of the bottle. 
really earthy, which I don't mind, but out of the bottle, it's almost kind of like you kind of jerk your head back. It's sort of got a strange, like pungent fragrance. Like the mango and the gardenia hit you at the same time. You're like, oh God. But when it was burning, another one that came together really, really well. In fact, it obviously became my third favorite one. Love this one. I love the smell of mango. Not really the taste of mango that much, but I love the smell of it. Uh, mixed with the earthy. I thought it was a really good one. It really smells like I'm walking through a fruit orchard. You smell the fruit on the trees. You smell the plants. Really good job. Um, as far as the hot throw on that one, I gave that one a four and a half. It could have probably been a five as well, um, but either one of these, actually cashmere and musk or mango and gardenia, could have been a four and a half to a five. They were neck and neck as far as hot throw goes. Now we're down to the top two. And honestly, I could have flipped a coin on these. I Instead of one, one and two, we'll say one A and one B. So number two or one B, uh, I'm gonna go with Moonflower Nectar. I really, really like this one a lot. It just smells a little, little perfumey for me. Um, and again, that's not bad. I have a lot of fragrances that are kind of perfumey. I don't know if it's just reminding me of something or someone <laughs> that maybe I just don't want to remember or something. I don't know, but um, I, it's a, I think I love it. It's a really good fragrance. Or if you've ever used the sea salt and orchid, uh, it's sort of like that in the sense that you got some floral notes and a little bit of sweet. Although I think the sweet one in this one was a little bit that pear and the nectar fragrance, um, but mixed with that, the moonflower, that, that floral was a really good harmony. For the hot throw, I gave it a four. So it wasn't quite as good as the apricot gardenia or the cashmere musk. In fact, I wish it was a little bit stronger, but it was still really good. Like you're gonna have no problem getting good throw from this with most waxes, uh, I would assume. For me, it did a good job, slightly above average, but uh, really good overall fragrance. Absolutely love that one. And then finally, last and certainly not least, my 1A I gave to Seldomer. Now this was my favorite out of the bottle, and it just it, it just continued to be my favorite when it was burning. It's something about those, those oceany kind of seaside type fragrances that have a little extra something to them. Just, I really love those. And those I just really appeal to me and I kind of flock to those fragrance oils. As far as the hot throw on this one, I also gave it a four. So my two favorite ones, both I gave four. So above average on hot throw. The Seldom Myrrh, I expected to have a, a more strong cold throw because out of the bottle, it is pretty intense. But the cold throw was only about average on this one. But again, the hot throw was a little bit above average in my opinion. So there you have it. That That's my favorite are my least favorite to favorite of these new fragrances from Candle Science. Those top three or four are certainly ones that I'm gonna be testing further uh, to incorporate in my own line because I just really enjoy them and they're slightly different to something I already offer. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know I did. I appreciate uh, all of you for being here. I really like testing these oils and making some test candles with you. I hope you guys enjoy that style of, of kind of making the test candles with me uh, rather than just me talking about them, making them, and then coming back and talking some more. I like to include you in that process a little bit. I just think it makes it a little bit more fun and interesting. Hopefully you guys enjoy that. If you do, let me know in the comments. So one last thing, if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, please consider subscribing below. We do a lot of candle making, talk about candle business on this channel. So hopefully you guys stick around and I'll see you next time. Thanks.